This is the new Renault Rafale. How it looks, how it drives, how much space it offers and what it costs, all you can find out in this video at Autonotizen with the new SUV Coupe. Renault has introduced a new design language and the Raval is the first car to fully embody it right from its production start. The facelift, the capture and the new Scenic are also candidates with the new design, which forgoes the LED light strip for daytime running lights and blinkers. We now have four geometric shapes, narrow headlights and the vertically arranged LED daytime running lights. Then we see here a radiator grille on our test vehicle, the blue, Design elements are cleverly placed directly under the slats, creating a striking appearance. This is part of the higher trim level Esprit Alpine, one of two trim options available for the Renault Rafale. I also said the new SUV from France is of course only half true. The brand is French, the car is built in Spain and the name, it's taken from the air and from the past. In 1934, there was a sports plane, beautifully equipped with a powerful Renault engine named Rafale, which astonishingly already reached impressive top speeds of over 500 kilometers per hour back then. And this moment right here is what the new name, the new model, should definitely remind you of. And the Renault Rafale doesn't aim to set any speed records. It can't because of the engine situation, which I promise I'll get to in a moment. But as the top model of the brand, it strives to continue a cherished tradition that earlier hatchback models with the Rhombus logo had, ensuring the rich legacy and extensive heritage are maintained. Let's remember cars like the Renault 30, the R25, um, and then the Safran. A little later, the Vel Satis was really stuck between the chairs, and unfortunately, it was not very successful in the market. Meanwhile, the world says we want SUVs. Then, of course, the brand with the fleece tag passed says we'll give you an SUV coupe called the Rafale. It's based on the same platform as the Austral and the Space, ensuring both performance and comfort. The Austral is a compact SUV competing with the VW T-Gun, for example. It is 4.51 meters long. The Rafale extends another 20 centimeters to 4.71 meters. It is a bit more flatter and noticeably a bit wider than the Australian wheelbase is at 2.74 meters and thus on the level of the larger space, also an SUV. On the same platform, which offers more interior space with up to seven seats. Maximizing space utilization may not be the top priority here. Let's say it's secondary, but the longer body is used for the sloping roof and the SUV coupe body style, which provides a distinctive appearance as well as enhanced aerodynamics compared to more traditional designs. We have angular lines, geometric shapes at the front, and that also applies to the rear with the still unusual for Renault sharp edge taillights. Then we see the still fresh brand emblem, which was performed some time ago. In contrast to the many lines and geometric shapes, the model script, which here proudly displays in cursive on the trunk lid, stands out. Then we carefully observe the emblem on the far right, clearly indicating advanced e-tech drive technology hybrid or e-tech hybrid, and so this really provides us the necessary bridge to talk extensively about the Rafale's engine program. And that makes it very straightforward at market launch. There's exactly one drivetrain option, but the car comes with three powerful motors, just like that, ensuring you get an impressive performance out of it. Here we have the well-known Renault Hybrid Drive, which is also available in the Austral with a system output of 147 kilowatts or 200 HP. This is assembled from a 1.2-liter three-cylinder petrol engine under the front hood with 96 kilowatts or 131 HP. The primary electric drive. This motor, which is also located here at the front, has a power output of 51 kilodars or 69, almost 70 HP, 205 newton meters of torque, just like the combustion engine. And then there's a starter generator with 25 kilodollars, which ensures the smooth interaction of the drives, effectively bridging transitions seamlessly to maintain optimal performance. And these three drives, they work together seamlessly and switch from serial to parallel hybrid drive, allowing for efficient operation. It may sound a bit complicated, but it turns out to be really quite simple, especially while driving. 
There is a multi-mode automatic transmission with 15 gears, but in use, you just drive it like an automatic gearbox, making it simple. When you're traveling by car, you might want to bring some extra luggage with you for the trip. And this luggage, of course, is ideally placed in the back trunk under the slanted hatch with the spoiler edge here for maximum space utilization. It has a button to open it above the license plate recess. The trunk in the Rafale measures 627 liters, which is 100 liters more than the Austral hybrid model. And this certainly shows that the length obviously also benefits the design here, allowing for a much more spacious storage area and extra convenience for all sorts of luggage, but also the cargo space. We have a loading edge with a stainless steel cover, so it's scratch resistant, but then it goes about half a hand deep to the double load floor. When I lift this up, we see a spare emergency wheel here, along with another tray that has extra storage space for tools. If you take that out, you'd have extra storage space, but no spare tire for emergencies or unexpected situations. We've got the carpet lining not just on the floor here, but also on the side walls at least three quarters of the way up, so no plastic gets scratched. In the plastic cover above, there are hooks on each side to hang shopping bags. And we also have a 12 volt socket. If these 627 liters aren't quite enough, I can of course remove the luggage compartment cover and then also fold down the split back rests of the rear seats to gain more space for additional luggage or other items you might need to store. What we observe then, however, is a step right here in the loading floor. Renault promises 1910 liters when both backrests are folded down and you then fully stuff the cargo area to the max according to their specifications. We're not planning on that now, but we'll cram me into the car. We're heading for a seat test in the Renault Rafale. The blue contrast color is not only visible in exterior details like the grille, but also here in the Esprit Alpine, in the door pockets. And then we notice the contrast, stitching in blue at the top, and further up the door trim, we also have the French national colors beautifully stitched into the trim, providing a striking and elegant appearance that highlights the craftsmanship. In the car, I sit under a glass roof called Solar Bay with no opening function. It contains liquid crystals in the glass, and then you can use a dedicated slider on the roof to adjust the shading level here to your preference. Additionally, there's also a small airplane symbol here as a nod to that aircraft called Rafale, which lent its name, thus honoring its renowned legacy and significance. Further down, I not only have enough headroom despite the SUV coupe shape, but also more than enough legroom, ensuring a comfortable and spacious feeling throughout the journey. Here, the longer wheelbase compared to Australia obviously benefits the interior space as well. You sit almost a bit low on the inner floor, but it's just about manageable. But I am also 1.92 meters tall, so not standard size, and I would say 9 out of 10 people have no problems here. You're sitting comfortably on Alcantara, part Alcantara upholstery, also with blue accented contrasts. Then again, you certainly have the play with color here. The Isofix child seat anchors are cleverly hidden behind zippers. You can then securely lock the seat in the bracket right here. By the way, the color blue also beautifully adorns the sides of all the seat belts in the car interior. So you can definitely see an extraordinary amount of genuine love for all the fine details somehow. But there's also something for fans of fresh air, namely vents in the center console circulating refreshing breezes. Additionally, we have two USB-C slots to power devices, and when the tablet is charging, for example, because it's completely empty, it can either be stored here in one of these sturdy nets on the backs of the front side lines, or the middle arm line can be used if there are only four people in the car and not five. It's multifunctional. I can fold the middle section forward as a pass-through when I have too much gear for skiing or need extra space to transport more winter supplies and equipment. Or I could fold out the armrest right here now, though it does look quite bulky, doesn't it? Why is that? Because it has some extra features. For one, a storage compartment. And then it's about the cup holders. A mount where I can then, for example, clip in that very tablet, which is charging here, or a smartphone, he said, that has a rather thick case. And then I can also check out the content here while driving. And that could, of course, make one or two vacations, especially when you're with children, considerably a bit more entertaining and enjoyable. To keep the video exciting, we'll sit in the front row now. Up front, there's plenty of room for long legs, wide legs, and tall backs that need extra space. The seats offer good lateral support for added comfort. 
Here too, we have Alcantara on the seating surface, striking blue contrasts, and an Alpine logo beautifully embroidered here, which is illuminated in the dark, creating an impressive visual effect. The center armrest with the storage compartment inside offers a good armrest, and then there's this element here that looks like a joystick, maybe for the transmission, but it's purely an A design and B function element. The transmission control is actually located on the steering column. You can move the storage compartment here. On the tray lies the smartphone inductive. If I push it forward, I have access to a large storage compartment here. And when I push it back, then we see here the two cup holders, USB ports, and then there's also the storage space for the Renault specific key card. We know the cockpit from the Renault SUV siblings. The infotainment system is called Open R Link. Here we see a vertically arranged display. And the special and unique feature here is the Google software Android Automotive, which is used as the operating system. And that brings advantages in today's digital life. We have the Google Assistant as voice control on board. We have Google Maps permanently installed in the car for navigation with real-time traffic data. And then I can use the Play Store, just like on my smartphone, to search for and download even more apps, whether it's my favorite music streaming service or any other app that I might find interesting or useful. Like Spotify or others, I can use web browsers. And then here we also have Waze, for example, download everything that's predefined. However, I can still use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to mirror my smartphone so I don't have to log into Spotify again, for example, allowing me to easily access my music without extra hassle. The screen responds quickly to touches with the finger, not just in the tile view for the apps where I just was, but also for making vehicle settings here. I can, for example, also quite effortlessly access all detailed travel information right here. I can then activate and configure the parking assistance and other features here, but also pull up comprehensive information about the power flow and the hybrid system, and even set it all up with great detail and customization options. The top bar is always fixed, so I can get back to the configured main menu directly, no matter where I am. Now there's navigation, phone, audio, and settings in there. There's also a bar here where I can conveniently activate more sophisticated climate functions. Also, with the ignition on, let me turn it on, then also hear the Renault typical and well-known easy-to-use toggle switches for controlling temperature, for adjusting ventilation intensity, and for other various climate functions within the car. So everything here is intuitively usable. The steering wheel has multifunction elements without physical buttons. On the left side, I can activate the driving assistance. We have an adaptive cruise control with lane keeping functions. On the right side, I have the ability to configure the content in the fully digital instrument cluster. For example, I can call up the navigation map, view the driving assistance information, keep track of the entertainment options, and maintain a calmer display that suits my preferences. You can switch through absolutely everything here and then carefully pick your most favorite layout from the available options. Additionally, there's an optional head-up display, and with that, the Renault Rafale is digitally ahead of its main competitors. It's a bit cramped behind the steering wheel, not just the paddles, which I'll talk about in a moment, but we also have three levers here, one for indicators and wipers, then also the control for the gearbox, and this Renault typical control satellite for the audio system. Here are buttons to adjust the volume and a dial to skip the radio station or music track forward or backward, giving you easy and precise control over your listening experience. On the dashboard, there's not only the bulge for the head-up display, but in the middle, we also see the well-known audio brand name. Hermann Kardon contributes to the optional sound system, which is just one integral part of the countless options we've carefully and meticulously installed in the high-performance test vehicle. From the factory, both the Austral and the Rafale come in the hybrid model, each featuring this advanced three-motor drive system. It's running now. I just activated it. I'd say let's start the test drive. As long as there's enough charge in the battery, which has a 1.7 kWh capacity, the drive starts electrically. Through the energy flow display, you can also watch how the components interact on the screen. When you're a passenger, you might not need to focus on the traffic as much as the driver obviously should. 
in 8.9 seconds, the Rafale accelerates from 0 to 100 km h, slightly slower than the equally powered Austral. He can go faster on the German Autobahn, namely 180 km h. Then he gets caught electronically at Mostral, its 174 km h speed. This also serves to protect the electric drive components in the hybrid powertrain. We are on our first test drives in southern Spain. That means a speed limit of 120 kWh on the highways and a speed limit of 90 kWh on country roads. That's naturally conducive to efficiency. Before we started, we did a lot of maneuvering for the video, which of course drives up consumption, and had an average consumption, according to the onboard computer, of 5.9 liters displayed. This puts the car 1.2 liters above the WLTP norm of 4.7 liters, but in the range of a Renault Austral hybrid already tested in everyday use. That's why I'll refer back to the one that with 5.7 to 5.8 liters also had a consumption in this range. That's precisely why you can definitely believe it. There's not only the option to manually intervene using the paddle shifters conveniently located here on the steering wheel. That didn't any hybrid and especially not a full hybrid. That means I can increase the recuperation in four stages here. I'm not on the brake now, and then the car decelerates down to about 10 km h, 7 km h. Such a one-pedal drive is not possible, but you can, especially in city traffic, have the car brake quite well at intersections through recuperation. Or even if I'm driving on a winding road like this, I can use the shift paddle here to gently take away a bit of speed and simultaneously feed energy back into the battery to improve efficiency. Additionally, the predictive hybrid system offers substantial assistance when root guidance is activated. That means photographic data will be included. If, for example, the Google Maps navigation indicates that we have a long downhill stretch, then the system knows, okay, I can utilize that downhill stretch for efficient recuperation purposes. For that, I might need a bit more e-support later when it's uphill again, like now, and this is supposed to really help make the car drive as smoothly and efficiently as possible. The chassis indeed comes with a solid and very reliable standard base. We actually have 20 inch alloy wheels for all trim levels. And when you unexpectedly encounter transverse joints and fairly short bumps, it indeed feels quite firm overall, without a doubt. But above all, the seats also provide great comfort. That really creates a nice overall picture although I find the rolling noise a bit loud, so the engine noise, even when using the three-cylinder petrol engine, is well insulated from the interior, but the rolling noise, especially from the front wheel arches, you can actually hear them a little bit. I mentioned the Google Maps navigation, which is a crucial part of the, the Edward Helmet display with Google's groundbreaking software. The major advantage is having clear red colored recommendations directly in the steering wheel and in the optional head-up display, enhancing visibility. This is a standalone option for 700 euros, and here you also get the navigation cues from Google Maps on the display. In the higher trim level, Prialpin comes with all-wheel steering, and Renault calls the system for control up to 50 km h. Here, the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction. That reduces the turning circle, providing more agility in city traffic. After that, it is adjusted by one degree, slightly in the same direction, ensuring accuracy. And that improves the tracking stability, for example, even during tricky lane changes on the highway. The all-new top model from Renault, the Rafale, starts at 43,800 euros in the well-equipped Techno trim level. It is 2,150 euros more expensive than a comparable Austral hybrid. Here we have the Esprit Alpine starting at 48,300 euros and costing 3,150 euros more than an Austral iconic Esprit Alpine model, which is known for its unique features. If you want to compare it, the car has its own model designation, it is significantly longer, and it's meant to be a separate series. But of course, we want to classify it within the model lineup. Our test vehicle here in Dolomite Grey, with the Esprit Alpine trim and many, many options, the solar bay roof, the head-up display as a single option in various equipment packages, comes significantly more expensive. 
It will cost you 55,300 euros, according to the final list, and is now available to order online. The Rafale jet is definitely coming. At the market launch with the hybrid drive described here, and in the fall of 2024, it will also be available with all-wheel drive. And this is the new top model of the series called Rafale E-Tech 4th Arc 4 300. And that already tells you it's a car with 300 horsepower system output. It will be a plug-in hybrid with a 22 kilowatt at large battery, is therefore also meant to achieve high ranges, has an additional electric motor on the rear axle, and thus 300 horsepower system output. The full hybrid can also be driven economically and still move quickly enough to be very efficient. If you don't push the engine, the combustion engine, too hard when it kicks in, especially in these speed-limited areas we had, it stays nicely in the background. However, on German highways or with an aggressive driving style, you will occasionally hear the three-cylinder engine growl and rumble, adding some excitement and character to the ride. At least subjectively, I firmly believe the Rafale is a bit better insulated inside than the Austral. My personal opinion, and I haven't had the chance to drive both cars under the same track and weather conditions yet, but it might be that the higher end model also got a few more felt mats installed here. The design, obviously it's a matter of personal taste and it also depends on individual needs. Do you need a steep rear? Maybe you want up to seven seats like in the S-Base, or do you go for the designer object? It's nice to know that the utility doesn't suffer much. We have a larger trunk from Australia here. The space naturally offers a bit more room, but for those who don't always need to load up space, who aren't hobby moving a fridge, will find a car here with plenty of space for passengers and lots of room for luggage. The Rafale may seem like a Peugeot to some, yet it stands out with advanced engineering. This might be due to the arrival of the new chief designer and their background or we might eventually just need to start getting used to the new design language a bit more often. In any case, despite the many rough edges, he's a nicely rounded package. More on the car on autonotizen.de, linked below. You can also find the link in the video description to all the Renault videos in a playlist, so if you feel like it, you can also check out the Austral, which I have mentioned quite a few times in this video, then you are very welcome to do that. And I can easily imagine, if not all pieces break, then later in the year there might be an opportunity to present the plug-in hybrid with 300 horsepower system performance here on the channel. Thank you for watching. Thanks to Marlene for filming. And see you next time on Autonotizen. Bye.